Um, all right, recording. Uh, dude, what what can I what can I say about this market, man? I mean, it's like, I get, all right, let's pull up some stuff. Let's pull up some stuff. What can be said about this market? I'll tell you what one thing can be said. It's fucking wonky, dude. <laughs> I'm starting to feel a little weakness, man. I'm starting to feel it coming. I'm thinking November, we get some serious downturn. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it looks like, looks like Joe bailed on me. Hold on, guys. Let me try to figure this out real quick. Yeah, he's not even in right now. One sec. I think I still have the, uh, there's the link, man. I can't do the Q and a without my partner in crime. <laughs> what he goes, karma. <laughs> yep. Is it back now? Yep. Is, it back. is it back? There he is. There we go. <laughs> Look at what Tega, she goes, join MIC home with the tech geniuses. <laughs> For God real. bless. Bro. All right, is my, my stuff working? You're good, buddy. Okay, cool. All right, good. So sorry, I, I just I signed in with the with the with the MIC account and got off of my own personal one. So oh, gotcha. should be square now. So with the state of the market, bro, <laughs> I'm starting to feel a little bit of weakness. I think something is probably gonna come November and December, but it's hard to say, man, because it seems, dude, like everything just keeps getting bought up. And I know tech is having a little bit of a downturn, but I, I, what do you think, man? Are we in like a tech bubble? Like people are saying like we're in another tech bubble. I'm like, ah, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd call it a bubble, uh, but it was definitely, you know, nearing that because of, I mean, everybody was asking, you know, what, what do, should I buy Amazon here or should I buy Apple here? Should I buy Tesla here? Should I, and you know, usually when the average retail person starts asking those questions that don't normally trade the market, you're in a bubble. Dude, I like, think Warren Buffett literally said, you know, you can barely make money or you can't make money in the markets when everybody's talking about it. Like that's just, it's just not a viable strategy, man. It's like, it's like buying the breakout and then it stops. You know what I mean? Bro, for real. Let's yeah, see. it's, it's tough. So yeah, I traded Tesla today um, and got out like minus a hundred bucks because, you know, I thought Tesla could really, could really get moving, but I guess it gapped too much today at the open. I think it just kind of gapped a little much, but I mean, last night we were talking about this in the webinar, we called first green day today. And I mean, that's a setup and a pattern that we talk about and we trade and I went for it on Tesla and Brian was in there with me too. Um, and I mean, both of us had some really good entries and we were looking for, you know, 370, 380 and, and it just topped out in the morning and time and then just sold off. And so I just bailed, I bailed on it whenever it lost BWAP for the first time. I was like, yep, nope, done. It yeah. should have done what Amazon's doing. And Dude. you know, shame on me for not for not jumping on the bandwagon of Zoom or Amazon. But I mean, last night in the webinar, I said, guys, these are my top candidates. I just picked Tesla because it's got the best volatility in terms of options. And it just so happened to be the one that just fell, like didn't work. And I'm like, well, damn it, it's okay. I mean, that's you, just nature you, of it. Um, I didn't even realize, cause I had, I had actually missed the webinar last night but I didn't even realize those were your top candidates, man. I longed, I longed Amazon yesterday, dude. I woke up to a nice gap. Of course, I had very nice. small hours because I was trying to average in for like a couple days. Like I actually wanted this to go, bro, like under 3,000. So yeah, I only yep. did size appropriate for massive, massive scale. But dude, I mean, it was nice to wake up to. And I'm actually technically long with Zoom still a little bit. Oh, nice. Yeah, I actually got these yesterday. Good. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't catch, I didn't catch any of it, man. I told everybody, <laughs> I told everybody, this is what's coming. And, and, uh, well, it's, and then it's, I, I didn't catch dick. It's like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, look, look, man, it's like, here's the thing, man. New traders come in. The reason why we saw this guys is because we've been trading for so long. New traders come in, they see this and they just think that stocks, once they start going down, just plummet forever. Dude, things dead cat bounce, bro. 
things have to bounce. Oh, absolutely. Point. And that's what I was banking on. I was giving myself enough range and room. Dude, I swear to God, bro, you're literally like convincing me to go back full time to, sm- to big caps, dude. I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm still long so spy. Like I'm still long the market. I just didn't, <clears throat> I just didn't catch anything today. I on the rest of that. So if I'm being honest, Joe, I am long the market for like another month or two. I, yep. dude, I, I can't stop going thinking. into November. I will be fully cashed too. Th- I won't. I, I think the close October I'm, I'm closing up shop like there. I'm not, bro. I I'm not going to be dancing with it. Anymore. I'm telling you right now, by the end of the year, man, if you're still long the market, I feel like you've got some delusions of grandeur. I really do. Yep. And I, I think it's largely going to depend on who who takes over the presidency, whether we go from Dude. whether we go from blue to red or we stay red. You know, it, it's I think it largely depends on that. Well, and here's the thing, man. Here's the thing is like, guys, whether the market tanks or not, just know that the elections are going to bring so much volatility to the market. It's inevitable. You will get volatility. So yep. that's the thing that you have to prepare for, whether it's up or down, it doesn't matter. You're going to get a lot of volatility coming and I yep. don't want to be on the wrong side just in case I, you, you know what I mean? Going into that with anticipation of, Oh man, I hope the market keeps going up or I'm short and I hate, I, I think the market will go down. I, dude, I don't want to get in that bullshit anticipation. No way in hell. Yeah. If I had to pick a prediction, I think, I think the market is going to sell off if, Biden is elected. One thousand percent in my eyes as well. <clears throat> Not to say that, you know, I'm, I'm picking a side of whether, you know, I want Biden to win or Trump to win. I, I'm just taking it from a market standpoint. If Biden wins and it's looking very plausible at this point, it really is. Um, if, if he wins, I don't want to be long anything it, because, you know, we're, we're hyped up. Corporate America loves Trump's policies, right? They love his tax plan. They love everything about it. Corporate America loves that. And the moment that Trump is gone, what is Biden going to do? Biden's going to change the tax plan. We're going to go back to an Obama-based tax plan. Of course. Very similar to that. And I'll be right and... back in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen in Cali if Biden's in office, dude. Let me tell you that. And I'm right back in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Biden, Biden, dude, this Joe, you asked earlier. Um, you asked earlier. You're like, what are you doing house sitting? I said, dude, this. I had plans. So I've been on Zillow every single day for four months, looking for the perfect California home. Yeah, I've been looking for a condo down in the city that I like, Burbank, right? Yeah. Dude, everything is so overpriced that I know by the time the election, if Biden wins, dude, I expect. Housing economy. The day. I'm literally counting down the minutes. If 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 the properties go extremely low in Cali, I am tempted to buy something. If they don't, I'm headed right back to Arizona and I'll buy. Yeah, I, you know, and this is the this is the tough line, and I don't want to like, you know, pitch politics, but it it's people want Trump out of the office, right? People yeah, want they, Trump out of office. But they don't realize that, you know, a lot of what he has done is, is for, for example, the eviction, uh, the eviction ban. Oh my God. All things related, all things related to that. We, we go away from that. We're going to go right. We're going right back. There's no government protection. You know, Trump doesn't want the market to tank because that's been his whole selling pitch, right? What you know Joe what I mean? Kelly like he doesn't want it to tank. What Joe is saying right now, guys, for those who are not familiar, maybe you own real estate properties, maybe you don't. There was I don't know if it's it's what's called a bill is passed, but Trump made it so that literally you cannot evict tenants right now until the end of the year, no matter how fucking delinquent they are. It's insane. So all these real estate yep. guys, and because they can't get evicted, what do you think that that happens? To all the renters, dude. So many renters right now are not paying their rents. No, yeah, we we have two properties um, that are uh, totally delinquent, completely and totally delinquent, and basically just giving us the bird. Yeah, and we're and just we waiting. Can't do anything about we're it? We're waiting. We, there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, and it, and it's and so we're just staring at it, and you know the 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 average person 
has a lot of protection under the Trump administration. And you take that away because of what Biden wants to go after. You know, Biden want, Biden and Kamala want to go after, you know, health care and everything related to that. Right. Um, but, I mean, on the business side of things, we're, pumped, we're, we're propped up on a business-related market, on a corporate-style market. And if we go, if we leave that, you know, I think a lot of people are angry about the racial prejudices and things like that, that, you know, it's, yeah. it's hypothesized that Trump has. And I mean, you can't deny that some of it really freaking looks that way. And, you know, people get mad about that. But at the end of the day, if all these companies start tanking <laughs> and they go bankrupt and, and there's nothing they can do and people continue to lose jobs and continue to lose jobs and, and we're back into another recession. Dude, so and, I'm, and that's, that's yeah. what I'm expecting to fully happen because honestly, man, like whether, and the reason why we're talking about this guys is this is very baked into what the market will do. And here's the thing, if the market dies out tomorrow, you know, small caps will be slower and big yep. caps will be extremely volatile. So it's good to know these things. You know, it's not like well, we think about it. We only got about another 45 days of good, of good trading. Normal until, just normal. until something yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, we got another 45 days before, you know, late October. Yeah, and, and then you can expect some serious, you know, magician acts. You know what I mean? Like people are yeah. going to get legs swept out from under them and they're not going to know why. Well, because they held through elections or they did this. Yep. Or, like yep. I've got, so I've got a retirement account, right? Of yep. brokerage that I build in um, into positions that I want to hold for the next 30 years. Literally, it wouldn't yeah. matter about this election. It wouldn't matter two years from now. I've got plays where I'm holding for literally do the next two days, like till I'm like, a, like an old father, right? Yo, right. yo, special guest appearance. What hey, the hey. hell? What's up, dude? What's hey, up? Popping in. Happy birthday. Thanks, man. Thanks. I just stopped by. I wanted to tune in, say hi to everybody. Uh, what's up? Dude, for How are you second, even coherent like, to talk? like Alex. <laughs> I can't get away, man. I can't stop fucking working, bro. I got a, I got a big time problem, but I just wanted to tune in and say thank you everyone for the birthday wishes. I know I pulled a Joe showing up out of nowhere, but <laughs> you did. love you guys. <laughs> Keep doing your thing, man. I'm going to go back and uh, try to black out or something. <laughs> so later guys. <laughs> See you, Alex. <laughs> That's fucking he's great. got that. He's got that pit bull song on replay. Fireball. Shit, dude, it's three o'clock. Uh, <laughs> it's three o'clock where he's at. I'm surprised Alex isn't already blacking out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's that great, funny. man. Hidden seller. Alex just showed up. That's a real big hidden seller. So, you know, anyway. you know, it's at the end of the day, man. Again, unless you guys have stocks where you don't care about the outcome in the next five years, you got to be careful, man. You got to be careful with what the market is heading into based on current events of the world. And, you know, it, like I'll say it perfectly, Joe is like, dude, I'm not necessarily a fan of Trump whatsoever, but I am red, man. I am red to my dying day. And, Dude, if Biden gets elected, man, I just, I honestly expect the market to tank in the economy. If someone, you know, I'm obviously, yeah. Trump got, you know, reelected, we'll see, man. I don't, I don't know, but I, I put my money on if Biden does get elected, oh my God, bye bye stock market. <laughs> For real, bro. It's, I, I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not convinced that, that, um, that it's a good thing to hold through, you know, if, if, because of the, I've just got a lot of, I've got a lot of unknowns, you know, if I felt like Trump was a shoe in, you know, then, then I would stay through the, through the election. Um, but if we change house, yeah, it's, I think there's a lot to be concerned with here. Yep. So we just want to make you guys you go. for something like that because it's very important to know because uh, a lot of new guys come in, man. And, and you know, a lot of, a lot of people don't, don't start with small caps guys. We have a big cap room and we have a, we have a small cap room. If you guys, you know, show up one day and you're like, Oh my God, why am I 70 points down on Tesla? And I'm 2000 points down on Amazon. <laughs> Obviously you're yeah. 2000, but I'm just saying like, we're trying to prep you for this shit. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I, I, yeah, I, I don't think there's a safe place to be. I don't think there's a safe stock out there. If the, if the house changes from red to blue, uh, and you know, that. not in the short run, not in the short run whatsoever. Nope. It's, it's a very sticky 
subject with me and my family because my my family's primarily blue. Uh, oh my god! Because they're blue. from yeah, same. They're from Oklahoma, and so it's a very that's a very blue area. But uh, everything I do is market related, and I can't deny that. I mean, this Trump administration has been the best market that I've lived through. Well, I mean, dude, I mean, seriously, <laughs> man, look, whatever you think about red versus blue, Trump, yep. Biden, if you think he's a racist, if he's not, at the end of the day, whatever he is, whatever side you're on, whatever your viewpoints are in politics in any form, Trump in office gave us the best market, stock market we've like ever seen. Yep. So I'm not necessarily going to give him direct credit for that whatsoever because I'm not actually a personally a big fan of Trump. But holy shit, dude, him in office has provided the most unreal opportunity we've ever had as traders. Yep, yep. Yeah, if Ooh. there was another Republican candidate, you know, I, I, would, I would be <laughs> a lot more. I, I, like, who knows, right? Like, who knows? Yep. And it's, it's just it's, interesting, it's, man. Yeah, it's yeah. – so, you know, it's, with, with this new Just deal, vote for Kanye. Vote for, dude, I'm voting Kanye 2020. <laughs> <laughs> did you know he's still on the ballot? I did, man. It's insane. It's like, you know, people are going to take pictures of it. It's a historic time where Kanye fucking was. <laughs> dude, did you see, like, one of his little rallies? Did you did. see any of it? I did. I did. Oh, man. That one where he started talking about, uh, about Harriet Tubman. And he was like misquoting like everything. And he was like, well, she didn't really do this or, but it really did. And it was like, <laughs> dude, everyone went, we're leaving. Oh my <laughs> God. I didn't see that one, but just you judging. Didn't see that one? Oh, I'm going to find it and send it to you, bro. It that was reminds me. Hilarious. <laughs> Kanye Twitty. That's too good. That's my favorite. <laughs> that right there is my favorite meme. I, somebody sent me that like five years ago and what's i it? have <laughs> what's the name? ever since bro what's the name of that kanye twitty song like red rose or something that was played in true yes Detective? yeah uh that's a good song dude yep uh i know i know what you're talking about and i just can't think of what it is now we're talking locates are free locates in the bow in the brow in the bow uh alcohol isn't taxed <laughs> yeah no alcohol tax. Slow gates are free. <laughs> Weed to go around for everyone. Yeah. Illegal not to have foe at like two times a week at least. Yeah. Abolish the PDT rule. Oh, man. Yeah. We're talking about it. <laughs> oh, man. We just have too much. Y'all are saying all the right things. Keep going. I'm almost there. Dude, I'm telling you. QQQ, very nice rally. Um, I know a couple of you guys wanted to actually talk about a couple of small cap examples today. So I guess we could just bring them up really quickly as I like to not necessarily make these small cap webinars, but uh, you know, I want you guys to be up to date with the info. So uh, can you explain how you add between inner and outer lines on the short side? Yes, I can. So um, I'll use a different example on this short time, but let me just talk about them in, in uh, kind of succession right now. So the first one being uh, Trill, you know, this was one of the small caps on radar. This was easy to borrow guys. Me and Joe talk about this all the time. I said this a little bit earlier. Where's this thing opening up on? Like coming, coming in the open, if nothing else is really on radar, if there's not many broken stocks to focus on, what do you think that this stock is gonna do? It's gonna do one of two things. It's gonna blow early shorts out of the water, or it's gonna get up to a resistance level and it's going to stuff hard. That very second option happened and I hit what's called the bounce. So again, keep it simple, keep it process every single week. I was scaling this bounce to VWAP because it finally set in a top. Make sense? Good. To answer your question short time on NWGI, uh, NWGI. This is a stock where you could have technically hit some inner lines here, or you could have waited for outer lines, which if I'm drawing them, these are it. This is an inner line. These are outer lines. I don't hit inner lines. I just don't. I don't like them. I think they're FOMO. I think they're bad entries. If you, I would rather miss than hit an inner line and then be a little bit shaky by the time it does possibly get to an outer line. I am known as the outer line trader. That's just who I am. 
Um, Bao has a lot of confidence hitting these inner lines. Scaling into the outer lines, I do not. I like a perfect entry right off the bat. If it's not perfect, just a little bit of scale. And then I like to be in the money quickly. So again, on a scenario where we say line to line, if I'm hitting here and it keeps going, and this is not the best example chart, but I'm just gonna do it on this one. Let's say that this is a lot of range. And I mean a lot, like let's say that this could be even like a $15 stock and this line to this line could be $2. When you hit something like this, because this is a resistance level, you know, with this little kind of like consolidation point in top, maybe, maybe right here at 210, if you stop out, the point is to reattack at an outer line, not scale from inner lines to outer lines. The whole point is you want to cut and then reattack at an outer line. Now, again, for this example, this is literally like 15 to 20 cents. So this is not the best example, but if this was very rangy, you get the idea. Now, because there's not a fuck ton of range in this, whether there was, whether there wasn't, I just like this general area. I'm not talking about this inner shit. If I miss, I miss. So be it. Joe, what do you think? Um, I like it. I, I mean, it's, uh, there's, that's a good explanation. I always like to reference VWAP when you're starting to decide whether it's an inner or an outer line. So, you know, it's like, how close to VWAP is this line? Okay, it's 10, 20 cents away. Okay, that's probably an inner line. And so if I'm going to decide whether I'm looking at an inner line or an outer line, that's kind of how I'm going to reference this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look, you know, where, where are we at right now? Where is VWAP and where is my line? You know, are we really below VWAP and my line is above VWAP? Okay, that becomes an outer line. An inner line can become an outer line. But it would take a serious amount of price movement to make that happen. So, yep. And that's the thing we talk yeah. about all the time, guys. Where is the stock opening up? Hey, if it opens up on VWAP, you don't fucking hit an inner line. You just don't. Yep. Dude, stop with the FOMO. Stop needing to trade every day. If you miss two days in a row because you didn't hit the inner line and that's all it went, went to, guess what? The third day, you're going to have a great opportunity. That is trading. If it opens on VWAP, you hit outer lines only. There's no inner lines. Joe's right. An inner line can become an outer line based on price action. When a stock opens this far from VWAP, your inner line is now the outer line based on current reality of where the share price is traded at. That is the difference. But when it comes to inner and outer, if you are that guy who lives in the realm of FOMO and you do hit an inner line and then you stop out, stop out immediately so you can reattack correctly. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm of that thought process where, you know, for me, a 60% odds play, like, you know, something that's going to work six out of 10 times, you know, it's better than, it's better than a coin toss, right? Because a coin toss is like 50% odds, you know, so slightly better than 60%. For me, if I don't trade like 70, 80, 90% odds trades, I waste a lot of mental capital. And so I can't do well when the 90 percenter comes on, oh, you know, dude, like the yeah. really good opportunity, the really, like, I just need to be, I need to be here for this trade. So it, it's like, if I waste my time on these 60 percenters, you know, it's just not worth it to me. And those inner line trades are very much like a 60% odds that it works it's Dude, just like and so i'm like fuck this <laughs> i love that and let's actually say it like this with every cause there is an effect and with every yep. effect there is an opportunity cost associated meaning if you get in a stock that you're not familiar with that's cause and effect the effect is you lose the opportunity cost is when your 90 percent comes around you're a biatch <laughs> You're mm -hmm. a plus. Yep. You ruined yeah, it. Yeah, because the last, you know, let's say, let's say you start a strategy today that's a 60% odds strategy, right? So you're going to yep. win, you're going to lose, you're going to win six, you're going to lose four. What if today that you start, you lose four in a row? You lose the four, right? Yep. Four times, four losses, back to back to back to back. And then, the 90%, the 80%, whatever trade comes along. 
Are you mentally ready for it? Fuck no. You just took four smokers. Like, you're not ready for it. No You're not way, mentally dude. prepared for it. You're like, golly, what if I'm about to lose for a fifth time? What if I'm yeah, going to lose? Yeah, it's setup, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and so you take smaller size on the better setup, and you win less, and then you win, right? And you're like, okay, I won. All right, great. And so now you go back to the 60 percenters, and then you take more losses, but you increased your size because now you've had a win under your belt. And it's this cycle that people just keep repeating that it's just – it doesn't matter what market you trade. It, those are the odds. You have to be prepared for that. And most people in the beginning can't handle it. Me, myself, I've been trading for six years, and I still hate it. Like, I hate that. I hate that shit. And I just don't do good – with these 60% odds plays. Joe, you just nailed it, dude. That's, that's very well said, man. I love it, man. You, I mean, guys, you can literally quantify all of this, literally. Like, yeah. I mean, this is a game of math, man. I know we see charts and lines and stuff, but it really is math at the end of the day. So like, I mean, me and Tosh are very similar. Tosh likes those 90% odds. Like, so outer lines, outer, hitting outer lines, that's a nine out of 10 trade. And that's, the, that's something that he and I can take and sleep well at night. I don't need to take these 60% trades and make more that day than I would have, but I would have wasted a lot of mental capital. You know, I'm, I try to live stress-free as much as possible, which is never going to be fucking possible in this market. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Definitely not as a trader. <laughs> no, no. So yeah. Yeah. Like stock Slayer just said, yeah. Wait for the slow pitch. Yeah. Wait for the slow pitch. Good. Warren Buffett watches 100 pitches go by. Guess what? He strikes on three of them. Yep. Uh, how would you have analyzed NLS? Let's take a look. NLS. To pr predict the tank? Nobody fucking knows that. Dude, what is this? Nautilus? Nautilus? This is what – this is a uh, – why would you even be looking at this stock? Yeah, Joseph. Why, why is it even on your stuff? scanner? This isn't – this didn't – I don't – I didn't Up see – Up 8%. And this is, this is also, brother, just not really conform to anything. It's just really choppy and spotty. And th this is just not really a play in any, any form. There's no edge in this. That's what we're trying to say. There's no edge. Uh, I'm, I don't know the market cap of that company. It seems like a bigger company um, just based on how it's trading. Yeah, it definitely does. So, I mean – on these types of trades, I'll say this. If you're going to trade those bigger market cap companies, we have a rule that when it gaps too much in one direction or the other, based on what it normally does, you need to do the opposite. So if it gaps up a lot, you need to be a seller at the open because most likely the gap is going to fill. And so what you would be waiting on, let's say like it gaps up a lot in NLS for me, it, it's, it's up 10% at the open, and it's gapping up a lot. The market was gapping up a lot. And so the market's gapping up a lot. This stock is gapping up a lot normally compared, compared to what it normally does. And so what you want is you want it to fill the gap, and then you want to join the trend. So for me, I wouldn't be trying to predict a short, like, in, like, getting it to tank for me. I'd want it to tank, and then I'd want to buy a dip. Just because I want it to tank doesn't mean I want to short it. It means I want to buy it at a better price. Like, well, then if you know it's going to drop, you know, why don't you short it? Because I don't fucking know how low it's going to go. I want it down here, but it could dip 20 cents and then rip my face off. I, like, yeah, it, it's – I want the pullback to get long with the trend. So – I wouldn't be trying to short LLS. I would be long in the dip every single time. I mean, look at the fucking trend. He's like, he's got it. I like, look at the trend. Stop fighting the trend, people. Stop fighting the trend. Okay, shorts were right for two fucking days. And guess what? They're going to be wrong again for the next 45 days. <laughs> Literally. That's my thought process on this. You know, we've got two day heroes, we got 48 hour heroes. They were right for 48 hours, but they're going to be wrong for the next fucking six months. <laughs> like, that's how it is every single time in big caps, man. Like, it's a top, and it tanks. And then guess what? We bounce like a son of a bitch. 
and it just it astonishes me. These freaking forty eight hour heroes called the top. Yeah, but you missed out on six months worth of fucking profits, idiot. <laughs> dude yeah those are the like those experts on twitter man it's like it's like the guys that are <laughs> dude the guys that are literally I'll, I'll give an example dude you know how many guys on twitter man some of the faces that you idolize you don't know they're short from here at 10 and then once it tops out at 15 and they've doubled tripled quadrupled down praying and shitting their trading diapers by the time it comes back to 12 yeah. or average they're like i told you i fucking told, told you, you. Yeah, and yeah, and get, you're like, I told you, I'm finally breaking even. Yeah, no, you were down seven dollars <laughs> a share of max size. You didn't tell. Dude, me. I used to be that person. I used to be and, that too, man. Let me tell you, I used to be that. Yeah, person I'm. Too. I did that. I did that we shit, all, man. We all did it, man. I mean, just look at that chart. Look at that fucking chart. Guys, the like, only people that can short from nine and then say, I told you so when it goes to 11 and now they have an average at 11 because they double, triple, and quadruple down. The only two people that can do that are the opposite ends of the spectrum. And you want to know what they are? The people with multi, multi-million dollar accounts that are comfortable yeah. being down a million or the guy that's going 20 shares, 40 shares, 60 <laughs> shares. Oh, shit, yeah. I was right. Yeah. It's yep. like, dude, you're right on 80 shares, bro. <laughs> like, it, yeah, exactly. It, it's, yeah, so I, I don't think that you could have necessarily predicted the sell-off, but, but, I mean, that's a, good, that's a good strategy that we use daily in the large gap room is when shit gaps too much, it's time to, it's time to bail, yes. which is what we told everybody to do yesterday in the market. We were like, look, it's gapping down a lot. The market is gapping down a lot. Shorts need to be covering into these, into this gap down, and they would have caught the meat of the move. And, and then here we are today, bouncing all the way back nearly above where we started from. Dude, I'm so sick over this fucking Amazon. I had um, 3177, bro. Oh, man. I'm sick, dude. Yeah, that's where I wanted, I wanted the, I didn't, I didn't want to start at the 3,200 line. Like I saw it and I was looking at it. I was like, Oh man, I, I like in my head, I've been kind of trying to trade very robotically. Yep. Um, and I was like, I want to take a starter here at 3,200. And, and so I started asking myself the questions, why would I? And the only question, and the only answer I had was, what if it rips? I don't want to miss it. And I was like, well, you can't fucking take a trade like that. Like, <laughs> that's not a good trade. <laughs> I was like, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't, I had no other analysis besides like, it feels like it wants to go. Um, and so I missed it. I fucking missed it. Dude, for real, man. And again, we're not going to nail everything. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. What's this guy saying? He said, MYT. Uh, oh yeah yeah like when myt went yeah yeah i see what he's saying yeah dude look at this oh man. yeah yeah i mean look at how close it's opening to vwap and i mean the first line for anybody for me yeah would have been that that two 205 ish and here's the thing man again when you guys see this in pre-market man this is dude this is just going to save you years of bashing your brains in does this look like there's meat on the move? Don't short it. Wait for a short squeeze. But it's only Wait. up like how much? Dude, 20%? Oh my God. It, yeah, yeah, it's still not up shit. But the point is, is like, look, when it does death candle crater, maybe you can get a bounce out of this. Today it didn't really bounce, but if this would have bounced back to like 215, I would have been smoking this. But that, here, yeah, that's a sexy death candle. Dude, that's that's sick, right? And I was telling everybody to wait for it. Unfortunately, and just I, I almost threw it right here, but I was like, Tosh, don't chase, man. Don't chase. Because what am I going to do? Scale up from 208 to 235? I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to scale up more like 217 to 235. So yeah. I didn't yep. get a piece of it, but like, dude, is I, I didn't take a loss on it. You know what I mean? Like a lot of short sellers got squeezed because they're anticipating. So um, let's see what Trill's doing. What's Trill doing? Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. How much is Trill up? Trill is 36%. God, that sucks yeah, to do. 37%, not even that much. You guys have to pay attention to what the percentage is up, man. Right here on TD, 
or whatever your platform shows, DOS, whatever, but is the stock up enough for room to come down? That's one of the number one lessons you got to learn. Yeah, I'm, I don't know that I could even, I couldn't even convince myself to trade this in the last 30 minutes if it breaks down. There's a clear death line at 12, like clear as day at 12 bucks. Like that's a death line. Dude, there's 12. I mean, you break, you break those pre-market lows, those after hours lows and you break 12 bucks. I mean, hit the bounce and we're good, but we're into the last 30 minutes of the day. So shitty time frame. So no trade. Yep. That's it. Simple, simple, simple analysis. You, sometimes you can eyeball these things, man. Does anybody have any more questions on trading? <laughs> Blind squirrel can always find a nut. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> the nut reactions. <laughs> That's funny. Should we run a poll at what time Alex blacks out today? <laughs> Put some money on it. <laughs> when does a stock have meat on the bone? Well, for small cap, like for me, it's like it's like 30%. Um, yeah, I mean, 30%. Like when there's still like 30% there, 30%. like, yeah. 30% just like Joe said, there's technically a move in it. I just don't love anything unless it's like literally like 60%. But again, 30% yeah. you can still have a move. But, and guys, like, dude, I'm telling you, you don't even have to go buy percentages after a while. Like in the beginning, maybe do that. But dude, what is it? Does this look like an eyeball it? Does this look like it has meat to you? No, dude. Like this can only go up, man. <laughs> like, and then it did. Like just like uh, there's so much of this shit you can just eyeball, man. It's yeah, it's MYT. It's either up or nothing. It's either up or it does or it goes sideways. Dude, it's literally. either up or I make ten cents on the short. Woo! This yay! Would've, this would have been your market today on MYT had it not done this squeeze. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Your yes. top, your top tick at one eighty two. Yeah, maybe you can get yeah, it. Yeah, you could have got a bottom tick at one seventy two. Look <laughs> at you, hero. Bro, I'm telling you. And the locate cost you two cents. So you know, it's like, cost me two cents. I can make you know ten cents. Okay, that's eight cents. I'm gonna pay another. I'm gonna pay another penny per share in commissions. Great, seven cents. Fuck that. No, I'm out. Dude, if your if your goal is to make seven cents, it's time to it's time to maybe. Dude, you'd have to be full size like every time. Yeah, literally. Like if you located two thousand shares, you'd have to be in two thousand shares. <laughs> like, you better get that to, like cents. make it worth the locate. You know what I'm saying? Like make it yep. worth the trade. You'd have to be full size. Yep. And nobody wants to go. Full One size. bullet, no, no chance of adding, no <laughs> chance of scaling. No if you're not right, you're wrong. I mean, just. <laughs> Yeah. What's the market doing? Let's take a look. Hey, hey, hey. Grind, grind, grind. Grind and grind. Man. It's so, a shame Tesla didn't do that. What's Tesla at? Tesla is, uh, I think, just still basing on. Oh, no, it's going up a little bit. Okay. Oh, my God. It's actually Look having that. a bit of a recovery. That late day move. Yeah. Now man. sell off. I mean, just it, it, Tesla is just up too much, and I made the mistake of taking it anyway. Lesson learned. Hey, Lesson this learned. is the market, man. We're always going to learn lessons, man. Yep, yep. And now the next time that I avoid it because it's up too much, quote, it'll fucking <laughs> rip everybody's faces off. And I'll be like, I didn't take it because it was up too much. <laughs> For real. <laughs> it's thank you, stock market. Oh, God worst fucking thing ever yeah dude i i heard it i heard a i heard a quote from a guy the other day on twitter or whatever you know his tweet he was like all right man my son as or he's like my son told his friends like i want to be a trader and he's like bruh my kid's only xyz age he's like he's still got about 10 years before he becomes a trader that's how much time i have to talk him out of it <laughs> Like, bro, that's funny. That's so funny. Dude, I I was just talking about this last night, but do you do you remember that tweet 
that um, – because we were talking about futures last night, and we were like – we are talking about how, you know, it, we find ourselves – large cap traders in these times find ourselves watching futures until like the wee hours of the morning until we finally go to sleep, and then we sleep for a very short period of time, and we wake up just to check futures. <laughs> and and uh, do you remember that Ramp Capital tweet where – he talked about um, the the chick that that caught her boyfriend cheating at, at 4 a.m. because she got an alert that his Apple Watch heart rate had increased at 4 a.m. Yes. And and he goes and Ramp goes, how do you know he wasn't trading overnight futures? And I was like, oh, oh my oh, god. Oh. Bro, I'm literally not kidding you. I'm not just saying and laughing with you that I remember that. Bro, I remember rolling in my bed reading. I died laughing when I read that tweet. That dude is hilarious. Are you I mean, sure he didn't look at his He's so features? freaking funny. <laughs> oh, shit. He's like, how do you know he wasn't trading overnight futures? <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> I, just, I died. Joe, back I died, man. Yo, back when the pandemic was going on, I think I made the most money in my career I've ever made trading in one month on a, on a monthly basis. And dude, you know what I was doing? I was actually trading big caps during this pandemic, dude. I was, I was longing and cost averaging in all my favorite companies. Dude, I, was, I literally was making a fucking killing on the long side of big caps when this market was going down i didn't short one ticker but dude i'm swear to god man there were a couple nights bro actually actually every fucking night because most of my positions for literally a month was swing positions long and i'd be yeah. playing for a 600 dollar down day in the futures bro i'd be up every single morning at like like 2 a.m pacific time like like my heart rate was beating out of my oh, chest. I'm telling you, you're like waking up and checking it. You're like, please don't limit down. Please Dude, don't limit down. Like, but, the, but the funny part, bro, the funny part was it was so funny because I was actually begging every single day that the market would go down even more so I could cost average in for the huge bounces. Because, dude, yes. for those who don't know, man, the biggest bounces in big caps come – either during a recession or when there's extreme volatility on the downside. So dude, yes. I was capturing every single bounce on the way down. I'm terrible at longing big caps in an up market. Guess what? I'm like unbeatable when the market's dying. <laughs> right. Dude, I was catching all these bounces and I'd wake up and I'd be like, all right, fuck, futures are only down 200 points. Can I get a thousand? And my heart yeah. was like, <laughs> it was through the roof. <laughs> I, I never in my life used to look at futures until I went to big caps and then the pandemic started and <laughs> I was up. I literally, I swear, dude, I was up at all hours of the night, like watching futures and I would just watch it from That's my phone. That's all I did, dude. And I was, I, I, and I saw, and eventually when, when ramp capital put out that tweet, I, I laughed so hard because it was so relatable, man. I just, I could not stop laughing about when, it. When in reality, the guy was caught cheating because he was pumping some side chick. Unbelievable. I know, right? At 4 a.m. And, <laughs> and they paired their Apple Watch. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. They paired their Apple Watches to each other so that they could find each other. Uh, and, and she got this alert that his heart rate had increased to a dangerous level <laughs> at 4 a.m. Dude, is that the funniest shit ever? Oh, man. First off, who wears their watch when they do it? You know what I mean? Like, why do you wear your watch when you're doing it? Why would you do that? <laughs> like, I, I, you know, the guy wanted that's to... That's kind of like the person that leaves their socks on. Like, take your socks off. Why are you being weird? Like... <laughs> 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 And, oh, so when can you determine when is a, when a stock is considered the hot chick of the day, pre-market or at the open? <laughs> Wait, what was the question? I was reading the comments. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> fashion over function. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> her hair gets caught in. <laughs> oh, my hair. Oh, my hair. Oh, it's in your watch. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. When can you determine 
when a stock is considered the hot chick of the day, pre-market or at the open? Uh, so how do you determine all the above, the brother? How strong is it? Is it the strongest yep. stock of the day? All the above. It's got the most volume and it's up the most. Yup. <laughs> and Joseph, for real, like cross yeah. stocks. Yeah. See, all of you single people are like, yeah, you got to buy the Pilates socks. Me, I'm like, hey, we get those socks at the trampoline park when we take the kids. Because they have grip on the bottom and yeah. they're free. <laughs> <laughs> like all of y'all are like, oh, yeah, you get those at the Pilates class. Oh, uh, yeah. When I did hot yoga and I see this and I just, I've got to have the socks that have the rubber on the bottom. It just makes me, gives me so much better form. I'm just able, to, yeah, for me, I'm like, yeah, they give them out at the trampoline park where we take the kids. Like, oh, my God. I'm telling you, and they're free. I've got hundreds of pairs. <laughs> hundreds. Dude, that is too funny, man. That is so funny, bro. But you know it's true. My <laughs> wife says that shit all the time. If I go to bed and I'm like wearing my socks still, just because, you know, I'm like, maybe I forgot to take them off or something. She's like, why are you wearing your socks? I can't feel your feet. It feels weird. Take your socks off. Just wear combat boots tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I, 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 I feel so bad for the girl that ends up with me, man. I am I'm a jester, dude. Like all I do is joke around all day and fuck with the chick I'm with. And my current girl, she just, dude, I tell you, I make her life hell, man. I feel so bad. I'm always playing jokes like that, dude. I if she complained about my socks, bro, I'd come with like spiked boots the four next. pairs of socks on. I'm telling you, <laughs> ski socks, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'll put, put on socks on your hands, feet. start rubbing her like that. Oh, Dude, yeah. I, I will literally come in with goalie cleats, man. <laughs> baby. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. Totally nude, just cleats on. I'll tell you one thing, though, man. If you got a chick that understands that you have to wake up and look at futures and sweat your brains off at 3 a.m., your time, whatever that is, you got to keep it. <laughs> it's like... I mean, that's the first thing that, I, like this morning, this morning when I woke up, like I was so, like, I swear if I would have been wearing an, I don't even own an Apple watch, but, <laughs> but like, if I would have, <coughs> if I would have had an Apple watch on, like, I guarantee you that somebody would have saw my like heart rate or blood pressure or something increase, like when I woke up, because I was like, I was just in such anticipation, like, it's that, like, it's that like I, i'm just now checking my phone hopefully nothing's happened super crazy and i wake up and like the market's gapping up like a percent i'm like yes yes <laughs> and like i mean that was yeah i i'm sure my wife would have been like why is your heart rate going up <laughs> oh my sorry God. i'm just checking futures <laughs> <laughs> You got the Apple Watch and, uh, and she turns you down for sex that night and you're in the bathroom and your heart's all of it. She's like, what the fuck? Can't <laughs> feet away from her, bro. Uh, I'm in the bathroom by myself. What are you doing in there? Your heart rate's increasing. Take it my phone. I'm looking at, I'm looking at my Tesla short. <laughs> I'm a perma bear. Oh. oh, man. I mean, it looks like the market finding some resistance around prior day highs well was it prior day highs around this level uh from, 242 just stumbled no, um i mean oh, from, over uh, here? um go two, back to the daily that you were on two, See, four, i can't five, remember these levels let's take a look zoom in there yeah those highs not yeah right there what is it 343 three yep let's get exact 342 about 343 it's looking like okay yeah so yeah over 343 you know we're back we're back in the hunt oh god don't even oh yeah i'm sorry i forgot how closely correlated bitcoin and the market are <laughs> silly me silly me bitcoin you know what's crazy man i actually rolled up to uh, a whole foods recently and a kid that i just thought was a fucking delinquent 
rolls up in a Porsche, man. And I went to school with this kid and he was a lot younger than me. I was like, dude, what the fuck do you do for a living? He pulled him a $140,000 Porsche. I go, dude, I haven't seen you in years. What's up, man? What do you do? And he goes, I, I, I cashed in big on Bitcoin. I go, you got to be fucking kidding me. And he had ah. sold, bro. He had sold at the most perfect time. And him and his buddy did it. And they were two good friends of mine. And they had bought in like a coffee shop together and now running it. And I'm like, you really bought a nice. coffee shop and did well off Bitcoin. No shit. But see that, you know, what, what did they do? They traded the market to go do something else. And, yeah, know? they didn't, they didn't stay in it. Right. Like how small yep. like they, they got, dude, if, in my opinion, they got fucking lucky and they took their money and now they're building an asset out of it. And I was like, yeah. wow, I actually respect you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, so about $140,000 so, Porsche off Bitcoin money. I was like, so it is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, we're going to start this Forex shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. Where's Alex at? Come back in here. I'm like, somebody said Forex. His, his name was Ronnie. I go, Ronnie, you know about equities? You know about day trading? <laughs> you you want to come join MIC? Yeah. I said, if you can do it, him, do it. Uh, there's Alex. Get the fuck out yep. of here. <laughs> yeah, he knows. He hears it. I go, <laughs> his sixth sense. I, he's sitting he's not, on the couch in his office. He's, he's not even tuned us. in. That was all six. He's not even tuned in to it. But the point is, Joe, is I was like, wow, man, if you can do it with Bitcoin and that's a gamble, dude, imagine what you can do if you actually learn our process. <laughs> in, right, in yeah. It's actually teachable. What's funny, though, what's kind of funny about it is had he traded the MIC process, like he would have never held through all of that. Because we don't teach gambling. No, you know, that's, it, yeah, it's that's like holding home. He would have <laughs> he would have missed out on shitload of, of upside. He, would, he but, wouldn't have had the hundred forty. <laughs> but by up. God, he would be consistent as shit. Bro, I would have <laughs> seen him roll up in a Hyundai first, right? <laughs> and then in yeah, a year, he would have had the Porsche. <laughs> oh, oh my God, God. he would have had a stellar ass entry. And man, he would have got out way too fucking soon, like the rest of us. Too funny, man. Uh, guys, uh, technically, like, yes. If you still have questions, please write them out. We still have. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this is fire the questions away. We got, what, 15 minutes here? Yep. Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> For real. Low hanging wow. fruits for tomorrow. Uh, let's take a look. Tech stocks. Zoom. 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 Zoom will be a low hanger tomorrow. Honestly, if if uh, if Trill closes right here, I <laughs> thanks, bro. I would actually like uh, Trill outer lines. Um, I know MYT was smoked. Not much meat on this, but if this can pop back to VWAP tomorrow, um, if what's that other one, Joe? Not ASTC. Oh yeah, ASTC. ASTC, I'd like like a BWAP push tomorrow. Um, what was that other one? Shit. Every time you say trill, I think you're like about to like say like a rap song. <laughs> oh yeah, right. It's so trill. And I'm was, like, what? That was so high school, bro. I know. <laughs> uh, NWGI got these are literally. It was. It these, was. It really was. It really. Was, Guys, yeah. these are four. Check this out. These are four low hangers right here for tomorrow. These are what's called low hanging fruit. Um, tomorrow, our day two plays on all of these. Well, this is a weird case. ASTC is technically a day three, I guess, but it's going to act like a day two play. So um, I wouldn't. I would just literally even forget about this portion of it. I would just pay attention to what happened to today. <clears throat> Uh, how would you look at NKLA as a low-hanging fruit? I know it's a big cap. Uh, let's take a look. Let me uh, NKLA, we talked about that last night. And Joe, I called out the levels last night that? and um, where I wanted it to, to go for the bounce. You don't have pivot points on here, do you? No, you don't. Okay. Well. Uh, here, here. I'll put them on. Hold on one sec. Uh, load style, bow, pivots, and zombie. Boom. There it is. See that green line? Like that that line right there is where where we wanted it to start bouncing from. Uh, but it just took way too long to get there. So oh my God, I can't make this up. I'm literally driving behind somebody that's got trill on the back of their car. No, it doesn't. 
I'm fucking serious. Hold on. I'm going to take a picture. Hold on. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not fucking kidding you. Trill. Are you sure yes. it's not trim? <laughs> Bruh, it says two trill. He's two trill. No, he's not. He is two trill. I oh could not make this up. Oh, my God. 30 cent. Hold on. Hold on. Bro, he's long from nine. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you, look, look at it. Post it, post it, trill. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> dude we. Well, I, I told you I couldn't make it up. Oh my god, dude, and he's headed to the Asian buffet. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> couldn't dude, make it up if I tried. I know where Joe's going for lunch. <laughs> the meat market. That's what she said. What? Oh. Dude, I don't even know how to fucking say that. <laughs> La, Michoacana. La Michoacana. La Michoacana. Damn, bro. <laughs> we'll watch a Porsche pull up beside Joe for real. Two trill. That hey, is... how'd you get that Porsche? I longed Bitcoin. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this shit up, dude. Seriously. Oh, man. You can't make this up, man. That's what you hear from everybody that's under the age of 20 that owns a car like that. What did you do? Oh, I bought Bitcoin when I was 16. Okay. Fantastic. Good God. Any more questions, guys? A couple more minutes, a couple more minutes. <laughs> I live next to two of those, still can't pronounce that market. That's hysterical. <laughs> Bro, a market like this, man, I'm telling you right now, they got the exotic shit too. They got cow tongue and buffalo. Oh yeah. Tongue. They got that good, they got that good stuff that you like from uh from the Brazilian steakhouses, picanha. Oh, which yeah, is what that's Yeah, that's man, that was the first time I first time I ever saw you eat meat, you looked like you'd killed the cow on your plate. <laughs> Joe Joe has never forgotten that story. <laughs> never, bro. I'll never forget it. Never. <laughs> Like slopping his meat in the blood bath that was oh my god, and Sam's the just bottom of your plate. Thousand strips of bacon. <laughs> Sam, yeah. Sam with this fucking mound of bacon. <laughs> what oh does my god. What does soaking action mean? Um, and what uh does the term pike mean? I've heard Harry say it before. Uh so yeah, definitely check out that link, brother. But soaking and or, or absorbing, not to get confused with, um, it's, it's a hidden seller, man. So a hidden seller, hidden buyer. So soaking would be like the hidden seller is on the offer, just soaking the bids, man. That's how I say it. A lot of people just say soaking for either side, but I just say it for short. And then I say absorbing for, uh, for the long side. When it comes to pike, uh, let, I'll just, I'll give you an example. I short MYT at 235 top tick. I cover at... 225, I just piked the hell out of the move. There was a lot more downside. Uh, basically, I bitched out early. That's what pike means. Uh, but hey, pike is a good thing, man. I will pike my way to profits in a good month or a good year any time of the week, man. We're not going for home runs. Uh, I'm a professional piker, and I'm proud of it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Isn't soaking what Christian's doing says, hey, I don't know about that. Is it soaking? Oh, wow. Hey. <laughs> hey. We're not going to go there. <laughs> but, but I choose We're going to talk about Biden and Trump, but not that. <laughs> that right there. That's a lawsuit, sir. <laughs> and I have no interest in that one. I'm going to give that one the Heisman. Uh. <laughs> Guys, real quick, let me just recap. Um, if you're not a part of QQQ, making a push worth a short, worth a short. Why would you want a short tech right now? No, thank no you. No way, dude. No, 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 no. That's guessing. Oh. Oh wait, no. SQQ is the inverse, right? SQQ is SQQQ is the inverse of the QQQ, which is I, right? You're shorting this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the inverse. Oh, God, yeah, God. so why, why, why would you not just long the cues? Yeah, literally. Why are you going to go trade the inverse <laughs> to be – like, you just have to short, right? You can't long it. You can't long <laughs> the cues, can you? You can't long it, so you have to go find the inverse ETF you know to short. 
Bro, I used to do that all the time when I traded commodities like like gold and and like dust and nugget and like natty gas and shit like that. Is I yeah. literally couldn't long the ETF that was the short, so I had to find the opposite to short the long. <laughs> Tesla new high of the day. Wow. Well, I totally messed that up. So oh well. Guys, just to recap. I had a hell of a day today, and I totally botched it. Nah, it's all good, man. You know that there's going to be a great opportunity tomorrow or the next day. Guys, if yep. you have any questions about becoming a member of MIC, if you have any questions about the Accelerator course, if you have any questions about signing up or maybe even getting a bundle deal between annual and the Accelerator course offered, we're not including for free, but I can work with you a little bit. Um, if you have just any questions in general, man, hit me up at 213-458-5997. Uh, I'll get your questions answered. We can definitely get you in the club. Um, I'm telling you, man, if you haven't seen by today's webinar how much fun we have and how much we're a family and as much fun we have, we get work done as well and really trade every single day and make sure you guys are up to speed. I mean, dude, I think you owe it to yourself to at least try, man. Try the club. A lot of good stuff today. A lot of good stuff. Large cap, options, small caps. It doesn't matter, man. We got a, we got a, we got a room for it, swing trading, or we got a man on the job to teach you. We've got video library lists. We've got phone calls. Literally, whatever you guys need as a trader, we got your back. All you got to do is reach out to us, man. Seriously. There's no more hands-on community in this universe than MIC. Apple's September 15th event is all about the Apple Watch. Oh, boy. I oh, just got wow. that a news alert dude iphone products are such terrible products yet i find myself always getting the new iphone or the new mac dude it's the i've said this a million times the reason why i stick with it is the environment right the iphone connects to the apple tv i have apple tv in every room of my house on every tv like i have macbook pros like I have iPads, like it's the environment, the fact that I can share everything in everything. It just, that's, I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole thing. Yeah. FaceTime. I mean, maybe I'm not really into that shit, but if, you know, if you work as a collective, bro. I would never be an Apple supporter. It is the collective. Dude, yeah. Yes. If you didn't have that Apple environment, you know, you would never. It's an, I it's agree. an umbrella. Yeah. It's an, it's like, it's, an a, umbrella. it's a subpar, it's a subpar product. Android. Don't wear it for, for real. Do what? Don't yeah, don't wear it at 4 a.m. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they call that the um the uh what is it? What is it called? The fucking Oh my gosh. All right, well move on. I'm fucking I've gotten drawn a blank, bro. Dude, I'm gonna tell you right now what <laughs> I just, you know, remember the other day or the other, well, month really when Elon Musk said, you know, he's basically like taking on Amazon or he announced, he's like, I don't like monopolies time to like almost basically crush Amazon or whatever he said. I was like, bro, I was talking with my uh, trading partner the other day about this. I was like, dude, whatever Elon Musk wants to take on, whether it's Amazon or the new Apple watch or whatever he creates, dude, I, I'm, I, I tell you, I will back that man for the rest of eternity. I, I saw an interview the other day, Joe, that, dude, how brilliant is this? So Charlie Munger, the business partner to Warren Buffett, for those who are familiar, right? Like one of the richest guys in the world and probably one of the smartest, if you were to talk business or anything like that and capitalizing on opportunity, dude, someone asked Charlie Munger in an interview, like a decade ago, bro, they go, what do you think about this upcoming Tesla? And what do you think about Elon Musk? Are you for it or against it? He goes, number one, I don't have a position either way and here's why. And dude, I've never heard a better piece of advice. He goes, one, I would never, I don't wanna long it. It's not, it's not my sector, it's not what I'm familiar with. I don't necessarily like it as a long, but I would never short it and here's why. He goes, never bet against a man who is crazy enough to think that he can change the world. And I was like, because, because he goes like this, he goes, because that, that guy may actually be the guy that does. And I was like, right. yep. Fuck, dude, I was like, oh my God, no wonder these are the richest guys in the world. He literally knew that, that Elon Musk believes in himself so much to the point of like, 
putting his entire life on the line and finances to fund his passion. You want to bet against a guy like that? Are you out of your mind? He will stop it. No. Yeah. Are you freaking crazy? Yeah. Yep. So, so dude, I just follow people like that from now on, man. And I got to tell you, man, there will always be the next Tesla. There will always be the next Apple. There will always be the next Amazon. There's always opportunities to build a portfolio for the long haul of investing for the next 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, fuck dude, ask Tay, man, she's a swing trader and I'm always looking for those and keeping my ears open. And let me tell you, dude, I'm like, Bro, what, literally, what's going to be the next thing, man? I would back anything that Elon Musk does. Anything. Dude, salary, who needs that? Just give me stock options if we hit a yes, hundred million market cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just thought that that was so cool, man. I had to share it. And it's like, look, you know, someone like Charlie Munger, who's already established an entire, you know, legacy of wealth. Dude, if he misses a huge Tesla run, he's not beating his brains in. He just knows how to stay safe in the day, right? Damn, dude, I hate this. I wanted Trill to end at like 13 so we could hit outer lines tomorrow. Now, this is just way too strong. This will not be. Um, oh, dude, you know what, Clow? I have yet to check that out, man. I really want to check that out. Um, but when it comes to Trill, man, this thing's way too strong for a short, guys. Way too strong. <laughs> it's 300 billion. Joe, you there? I think he ran into the rainstorm. <laughs> Don't bet against Elon. Guys, I think we're actually going to wrap up shop right now. There's two minutes till the close. This was an awesome webinar. We definitely turned this into a lot of a podcast. Uh, hope you guys got some really cool information out of this, a little bit of learning. Um, we're able to keep you guys away from FOMO. Um, <laughs> if Joe is here to say goodbye, we can say goodbye. But you guys have been awesome, man. I love when you guys show up every single week. It's so much fun. Thanks, Tay. Thanks, guys. Um, I can't wait to next week, man. This is what we do, man. It's, it's a lot of fun and it's an honor to talk to you guys, truly. Later. There he is. See you guys. See you, Joe. Yep.